Hi everyone, uh, I'm Leo. I'm a web developer at Courtly. And before we begin, I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit uh, why I became interest interested in, uh, in server-side rendering. Uh, when I started uh, reading on server-side rendering, it felt like a mystical thing, uh, a term that people use but don't fully understand and probably don't do. And if you've been to the keynote uh, earlier, you know how important that is. Um, so we're going to see a demo later today about uh, what are the benefits and the advantages of this technique? And uh, let's begin. So, a little background. Um, in the beginning, the web was uh, composed of basically uh, basic HTML, static pages, and we would uh, serve them to the clients to, to display. Um, and they were not interactive, they were just static markup. And later on, we started adding uh, complex uh, behavior and interaction. Um, using JavaScript, and the more advanced the tools became, the more uh, files were required. So we started bundling our code and delivering that to the client uh, to render uh, the application there. And um, let's review the, work the load flow of such an uh, application that renders the UI using JavaScript. So in the normal case, we have a browser and a, a server, and uh, the process starts with a GET request to the root. And when that request usually uh, resolves in a index HTML, uh, which contains usually a, a div that is marked as root for the application to latch on, and a bundle. And um, that page is basically empty for the user, right? Because the browser has to go and get the bundle in order to create uh, the UI. And when that bundle finally uh, comes back, uh, we find ourselves waiting. Waiting for what, you might ask? And the answer is rendering. Um, rendering in this context means to generate a, a markup, in this case, or DOM, uh, from the application, not painting stuff uh, on the screen. So when this rendering done, we get something like this, uh, a header or a spinner or something basic. Uh, why? Um, because the browser does not have all the information, uh, dynamic data that is required in order to display content. So it goes and fetches that content. And let's assume it's a JSON, but it could be images or anything uh, user-specific. And when that arrives, we find ourselves waiting again. Why? You might ask. Now we probably know. Uh, we're waiting for rendering. The browser has to go uh, generate the visual components using that data I just received. And when that's, that's done, we finally get what we came for. Um, let's try to think about some of the problems in this uh, flow. Uh, first point is the user experience. Uh, the time to first paint, like the actual time that passes from the uh, navigation to the page until something shows up on the screen, is very long. That's um, in nowadays even a few a second or two can be frustrating for a user. Also, things that are normally trivial to do, like navigation uh, back and forth, for bookmarking, or sending a link to a specific page, um, you need to take special care for that. Uh, because there's no, uh, usually no uh, routing done in such a single page application. Um, another concern is mobile devices. Uh, mobile devices usually have a bad connectivity, like some average 3G or a bad uh, Wi Fi cafe um, in a cafe, and downloading that bundle takes time, a lot of time, and then the device has to go through it um, to generate the application. So that's even more uh, frustrating for the user. And one final concern is uh, SEO. SEO is not totally figured out for uh, applications that generate uh, UI in the browser. Google claims they know how to render uh, the application in their web colors, but you have to rely on that. They understand when things load in your application. And also, what about uh, other markets? Like in China, they have uh, Baidu, and in Russia, they have Yandex, and they, as far as I know, they don't do that yet. Um, also, you have to consider uh, thumbnails when you share your application. Let's say you, share, you want to share a link to your website on Facebook, what would that show? This, the index has nothing in it. Um, the, uh, yeah. So I want to suggest a solution. Um, first, we have to realize that the main source of our problems is the fact that we generate uh, things on the client side, the elements, the DOM, um, and we need to get around that. So why not just to render that on the server? The initial server response has to be meaningful if in order to 
uh, approach those problems that we mentioned. And you only add the interactions later. And we call that server-side rendering. Uh, let's see how that would work. Again, we have our uh, loyal browser and the server. And it starts with a GET request to the root. But we already find ourselves waiting. What are we waiting for? Obviously, rendering. But this time, rendering is done, the initial rendering is done on the server. The reason is, like we said, we want to deliver to the client a populated page, something meaningful for him uh, to, uh, to process right in the beginning. And when this rendering is done, the index HTML already has some markup in it. It might not be complete, because some things are only possible in the browser, like uh, accessing the window object or uh, registering uh, event listeners. Uh, because the page is not fully complete, uh, the browser has to go get other stuff, like the bundle to add the, all the interactions and the content to generate the rest of the page. And when those are fetched, uh, we wait again. Uh, but this time, this second rendering is already done on the browser. Like we said, some things are only possible on the client side. And when that's done, uh, we have our page. Um, now, how did that solve our problems? From the user experience perspective, um, the time to first paint is a lot shorter. The user uh, can start processing the page uh, almost instantly compared to the loading bundle time it takes. And uh, that makes him happy. And second thing is, um, when it comes to all uh, navigation or linking or bookmarking, uh, it will uh, do it right, because there's no, it's like normal interaction with a, a document, a web document. Um, this whole idea maintains the original concept of the web, that the web is a collection of documents pointing at each other, not complicated software that has to be uh, run and passed and uh, generated in order to see a document. Uh, from the concern of our mobile devices, now it's better for them. They can load the uh, HTML, uh, which uh, is obviously bigger than it was because it contains information, but is significantly smaller than the average bundle. And it makes the user uh, it makes the experience on mobile devices even better. And from the SEO perspective, crawlers are now happy. They can uh, go over your page, index whatever they need uh, for social media sharing. You have all the you can generate all the uh, metadata that you need, uh, so that will work a lot better for you as well. Um, before we go to the demo, I'd like to mention uh, isomorphic JavaScript. Um, because if you think about it, server rendering on the server has been done before. You could do it on PHP. There's a solution for Java. Um, so what's the, what's the big fuss around here? Um, isomorphic comes from Greek. Um, iso is uh, a shape and morphic. No, iso is equal and morphic is shape, obviously. And the idea is to generate uh, the same code is executed on both the server and the client. And that's what makes JavaScript unique. You can do that with one language on both ends, your entire application written in JavaScript. And uh, that allows you to write your application logic once. It's less development time, uh, probably less bugs. Uh, there are trade-offs. Um, but overall, it lets you write your application end-to-end -end in one language. And um, a key framework, there are many frameworks that let you do that, but one important framework that made a huge impact is React. Uh, React. Um, what they did is to ab they abstracted the rendering, um, the re rendering mechanism from the application logic. So the render is adjusted for what platform you're trying to render for. If you're trying to render for the browser, you can generate DOM. If you're trying to render on the client, uh, you can generate HTML, like we'll see uh, in a second. Uh, so just let's go for the demo. Um, I'll show you the application first. This is my pancake shop. And the application is a single page application, like you would expect. Uh, it uh, loads a bundle. I can show you the source. Can you see anything? All right. So, um, basically, an empty HTML with some title and a, a root. And the application would normally latch on this root and nest all the uh, markup there. And the link to the bundle. And uh, what I did, because I wanted to show you how much better it is to render on the server sometimes. So what I did, I have this function that uses, oh, you can see that, I think on this. Right. So Chrome added uh, to, the, uh, to the window object a function called load times, and that returns an object 
uh, with all various uh, timestamps related to the page loading process. Um, and they are referenced to uh, January 1st, 1970, of course. And so by um, getting this difference between these times, the time to first paint and the start, uh, start load time, I get the time from the moment I started navigating until the first paint occurred. And uh, that's some calculation to uh, make it milliseconds. And that is called uh, after the rendering. And as you can see here, without any throttling to the network, I got uh, 338 milliseconds, and it stays pretty consistent if I'm going to. OK, but that's even a little better. Hey, it gets better. Maybe I solved something. OK, it's the, uh, you can see it's pretty much the same numbers. Um, but that's not a normal case, because the bundle sits right here locally on my machine. If I will try adding a throttle, Let's say even a, let's do it a 4G, and that's not even that common, I think, here. And refresh the page. As we enjoy this blank uh, page, here we go. It took almost four seconds to generate this page, which basically has three stacks of pancakes in it. And here on this other tab, I have the server-side rendering a loaded page. And let me just show you how simple it is for uh, this application. Uh, what I did was I took the original HTML, the index, um, which was, is basically empty. But instead of, uh, because I, I'm rendering on the server, I need to inject the HTML that I'm going to generate right where the application would latch and apply its uh, mechanism. So in this function here, I rendered the application uh, using render to string. That's the abstracted part of React, where I can render to string, it generates HTML as opposed to render the regular render, which renders DOM. And I send that to the client here. And let's see what's the uh, effect of this. First, as we can see, without any throttling, we get way better numbers. And if we inspect the, the source again, we'll see a populated page, something that a crawler or a, a, a browser can just view instantly. Um, right. And uh, for the final thing, let's add throttling. Now, um, what, do we, what would you expect for such a throttle to occur? Like to add a similar delay, or maybe we'll get some Im very improved performance. And now as this page loads, the image is obviously throttled as well. And the uh, console log is delayed as well. Uh, but that's because the console log prints only after the page um, is, after the bundle is running on the client. But this time is the actual time the browser recorded for the first uh, render, for the first paint. And as you can see, that's 74 milliseconds. That's hardly any different from the um, unnot throttled case. Compare that to the three seconds, uh, almost four seconds in the, uh, oh, the previous case, that's a, a huge significance, uh, a huge improvement in performance. Any questions before I end the demo? Yes. That's true. We'll, we'll go touch the um, trade-offs in, in a second. Let's just do trade-offs first. Trade-offs, like I promised. Uh, from a difficulty standpoint, um, it's not always that trivial to add uh, server-side rendering to your application. This was a very simple application to show you the uh, point of this. Um, Sometimes you have to find solutions to, to problems you did not have before. Uh, for example, let's say you try to fetch data in your application. And usually you do that only from the client, so you have a mechanism to do that. Now you have to fetch data from the server as well in order to render on the server. But what do you do? Do you maintain two fetching mechanisms? Or do you just expose your database to the client, but you don't want to do that? Um, a solution to that would be, let's say, to abstract the database. Uh, Facebook has a, a cool framework called GraphQL. There was a lecture on that, actually. That's pretty funny. And what it does, it lets you abstract your database, uh, even if you have already existing logic, and then you can fetch um, your data regardless of what, on what platform you're trying to render. Um, another trade-off we have to consider is performance. Uh, uh, first thing you have to know is that like, if your servers have more logic to run, more processes to do, then you can handle less requests. So you need better servers or more servers. Um, and when it comes to the servers, suddenly they start uh, running logic. That means they might have bugs. Developers do mistakes sometimes. 
and um, you might have security issues because suddenly the server might be tricked into doing things you did not intend it to do. Um, so there are things to consider. And one final thing, like uh, this nice guy mentioned, your page, even though it, it is rendered, it is static. Uh, until the bundle actually loads, you cannot interact with the page, and your users might confuse it with a browser freezing or malfunctioning application. That was it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. That was, that was the tip of the iceberg when it comes to server-side rendering. Uh, feel free to contact me, and uh, I hope you'll make your future apps better with server-side rendering. Thank you.